Hey guys, welcome back. So we just solved the case of the gilded cage and Imogen has left us some information about our mother on a bench somewhere close to her house. So we're gonna go find it. This is her manor, right? Where's the bench? Nothing on this one. There we go. So we have a letter, something else. My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. And we have a letter. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go? Okay, so we're gonna go back to our house and reconstruct something. So it seems Theodore was in love with Violet, but she didn't love him back and she sent him the necklace back. If you guys need time to read those letters, then you can just pause it. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. Alright, let's see if we can reconstruct our memory. You know, I envy you, Sherry. You can talk to other people and they won't ignore you. And I envy you. You can ignore any person you're bored with. You don't miss out on much. Most men are dull, unlike yourself. Well, I'm flattered. So Sherlock is a bit antisocial and John would like to talk to people. So that is our bedroom. Yeah, we've been here. So what can we do with this fragmented memory? Something here. I had a surprise for my mother. You had a shovel with you, John. I was holding an ancient Greek vase, or rather, quite a big piece of it. I remember now, we dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona and were eager to show my mother right away. For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody answered. We thought that she was busy. So we left the vase and ran downstairs. I decided to gather some archeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Yes, it came from upstairs. The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor. 
and your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. Otto Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. Okay, so we managed to unlock her door. Something weird is happening in this house. Her things are still here. Presumably, Mycroft never felt the need to sort through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to. No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality. Okay, let's search the room. Look what I found. The White King is under attack. Sherry, can you save him and checkmate the opponent in one move? You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. All right, I'll play you, John. Let me think about this. I think we need to defend the king with the bishop. Oh, nice move. You saved the king and checkmated the black king with the rook. <sighs> That's right. I'm a chess master. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. So somebody threw something maybe at the painting? This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason. There's some tools here. Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not. They look very painful. Read his notes. Okay, so that they were strapping her to her bed at night and they put bars on the window. She was very drugged up. I wonder if the doctor is somehow involved in her murder or death. Because we don't know if it's a murder, but yeah. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. Chemical analysis. Do it right away. giving her shrooms. No wonder she was acting weird. Okay, let's see what else we find. The 
Yeah, they were strapping her to the bed. That's, man, that's bad. Straps on the bed? It just doesn't look right. I wonder if the doctor was just drugging her up for no reason. Seems this was the most frequently used medication. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily. Not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. Another letter. So she has been writing letters to her husband who's dead, but I wonder if it's because of the drugs that she was given. You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. My mother loves flowers. They made her smile. Want. I remember we would bring a new bouquet every week to make her a bit happier. That's why we collected all the violet flowers we could find on the island. Oh, I would love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. For medical purposes, I suppose. Well, that was creepy. What the heck was that? Bars covering the windows from the inside. Nothing. Nothing in the mind place. Did we miss anything? Yes, we did. This picture was drawn by my mother. I recognize her hand. There's a date on it, 8th of December, 1868. 1868, I wonder if that date is gonna be important. This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. So she's getting sloppier and maybe that's because she's being drugged. Letter. Another drawing. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. There's no date at all. So she was really, really deteriorating, probably because of the meds. I think we have everything in this room. Alright, let's see what else is in the house.
Okay, I feel like I'm missing something from the bedroom. It's a strange feeling to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall anything except the deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before we even met. It's so sad. I'm sorry. Oh, it brings back some memories. Okay, so it looks like Sherlock started imagining or being friends with John after his father's death. That's what it would seem like. And his mother was not able to accept the death. Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? The broken plate shards were all over the floor. Mycroft had to change his suit as the one he was wearing was completely stained. It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning. <sighs> okay, time to recreate. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you're enjoying this series. Mycroft? Let's see what else we got. So we have the doctor yelling at the mother. Is she throwing something here? John and Sherlock. Okay, they were probably crying when something like this was happening. And I don't think the doctor's yelling at her. I think she got angry. And what's Mycroft doing? Yeah, I think the broken plate is because she threw that and it fell. And Mycroft, need, he had to change his clothes, so this would seem right. Because if he dropped it, he wouldn't get dirty, right? I think this is more likely. It would make sense that Sherlock and John are afraid in the corner. Okay, let's try to validate this. Maybe if we're wrong, we'll try again. I don't believe you! Liars! Get away from me! It's not true! It's not real! What? Oh. Everything will be okay, Sherry. I promise. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died.
mother, she, she was not just ill, but bad. I'd have mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more, John. I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. Every time you... I, I just don't... Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. I... I know. But can we at least leave it for another day? It cannot wait. Let us find another door and finally learn the truth. That's pointless, Sherry. To date, you have had no control over the return of these memories. It is all triggered by your work elsewhere on Cordona. You must accept that this will have to wait. Are you all right? In the end, little has changed. My mother was still unwell, just not with tuberculosis. What I do not yet understand is why Mycroft lied about it. There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait. Did you hear that? Yes. Metallic salts. What is this sailor doing here? That's good deducting skills. It seems like the more we remember, the more we kill John. So we heard something in the house. Sherlock Holmes, isn't it? I was looking for you. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You can call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose. You're a fast learner, sir. Okay, let's observe. He is a sailor. Painted recently. Old uniform. No sign of physical work. So maybe he's not a sailor. He's an artist. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I cannot believe that Mr. Vogel has somehow successfully called my attention to his gallery. You're here with an invitation to visit it, obviously. My word, you are fast, Mr. Holmes. Could you explain how you came to that conclusion? Of course. Explanations are my favorite part of any conversation. Hands without any sign of regular physical activity in contradiction to one who would most usually wear such a uniform. The paint in your hair is pink. I don't know of any military service that paints their ships pink unless they have launched a new fashionable fleet. A sailor with the soul of an artist? Hmm, I would suggest rather a gallery employee disguised as a sailor to mislead me. How many artists on the island know where I live and of my passion for deduction? Werner Vogel is clearly at the top of the list. And you've been attempting to conceal something square-shaped within your pocket. An invitation, I suppose. An invitation to Mr. Vogel's gallery. That was remarkable, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Vogel was right about your genius. I think he may have even underestimated you. This is your invitation. Please tell Mr. Vogel that the seed has been planted. He asked me to tell you to do so. If you win this little game, farewell. Okay, the muse from abroad. So we need to find the gallery. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I presume. Correct. With whom do I have the pleasure? Emilio Estevo. Happy to make your acquaintance. I am here on behalf of Mycroft, your brother. He is on his way to Cordona. In the meantime, he requests your assistance with the sensitive matter. My orders are to provide you with the details. I'm busy investigating. I'm afraid I don't have time for this now. I hope that you will reconsider. If you do, I'll be here. 
That sounds like a side quest. And I'd like to do the main mission right now. So let's take a look at the map and see where we need to go. It's in the old city. It's a bazaar road and Hermes Avenue. So right here. This would look like the art gallery. Mr. Holmes, you came. Oh, how kind. Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. Your man's disguise was easily debunked, Mr. Vogel, but I shall admit that you planted in me the seed of curiosity. Ah, terrific! I had no doubt you'd put the pieces together. Let us call it an opening gambit before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. And this locked area downstairs, what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut, and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no! It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors, and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes opened. What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around, if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see. So he got robbed, and we need to find the culprit. Alright, let's investigate. Okay, I don't think I need to look at all the art pieces. Let's just check this other room. We came through here. Can't go upstairs, can we go through here? No. Alright, let's check the basement. Back home we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him.
Sherry, how about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness unbroken, John. Look, somebody opened this. A handprint of the thing from another world. Plus, it looks fresh, and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. Somebody locked themselves in the coffin, and that's how they got in. Sodden and mold ridden. One presumes deliberately. The parasites of creativity. Or just a reflection of the artist's recreational interests. Saturn devouring his son. A grim composition. Unflinching in its ferocity, yet somehow beautiful. Ugh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. So they took the painting out of the frame. And smuggled it out. Cigarette. A mouth power butt. Cold fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a cold moustache. Interesting. So there were paintings hanging here. Somebody sleeps here, that's creepy. Closed with a metal bolt. Got in through here. Footprints, size nine and a half. So maybe they got in through the chimney. The left step's length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. Interesting. Old and hasn't been used for a long time.
Okay, so we can recreate something, but it sounds like from the evidence, all the paintings were burned except for one which was taken out of the frame. Alright, let's give this a try. That would seem correct. It has to be that. So this is Vogel actually. So this looks like a Vogel is faking a break-in. That's definitely not it. That would seem more logical. I think that seems correct. Let's see what else we have. We know somebody came in through the chimney because there's footsteps right here. Okay, I think we have these two correct. I don't think that was Vogel. See, I haven't noticed. Does Vogel smoke? Did somebody come downstairs? Vogel do this to himself? I doubt it. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt. He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Vogel heard the noise. At the sound of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room, but the vandalism was a cover for the theft.
So there was one painting they were interested in. This is uh, not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? It's a reflection on mortality. Nothing lasts forever, no beauty sustains itself, and everything succumbs to darkness. Am I right? I don't know. Well, that's absurd. Of course you know. It's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind that forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, what's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupts the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. It matters not what is or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to wrest back control of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel, even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement above all others is objective and rational thought. I see, then, why you dislike art, for it means whatever you want it to. Or, perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Aha. Uh -huh. I think it was pretty trivial. Mr. Vogel, I have confirmed that the intruder was an average-sized, flexible, malpal smoker with a limp. As it happens, the vandalism was a cover. The true intent was to steal a painting without your knowledge. The fact is, one of the pieces from the Wild Room is not in the wreckage. What? That is extraordinary. This thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp. Do any of your clients or artists come to mind? My! Your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. I should introduce you to Bosch's works. Alas, I'm afraid I cannot suggest a culprit. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the coffin. Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belonged to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm, indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. What was depicted in the piece? Hmm, a bound woman wrapped in robes being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. 
Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. So where can I find Boniface Mercuria? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news. Or at least with a good story. Okay, so we have to find Mercurio. He's a prominent person, so we have to ask about him, I guess. Let's go to the Chronicle. Maybe we can find him. Find his address. He's a prominent person. Or maybe, maybe the police station? Oh, let's try this first. Because maybe the newspaper wrote about him. I can never find the entrance. Where is it? Mr. Holmes, I have something for you. Mr. Holmes, I see what you're up to. Mysterious stranger pursues betrothed woman. But please, let us keep things professional. I have in my possession an envelope containing details of a special assignment for you. Tell me, are you interested? Not right now. Miss Sertle, I am not pursuing you and I am not pursuing further work at the minute. Well, it shall wait for you here. Do come back, it's quite something. So this guy's probably a celebrity. If he's a prominent person, he's a celebrity. We know Old City. Let's look. Hermes Avenue between Scarlet and Olive. He put his address in the newspaper. Excellent. So there's Hermes Avenue. There's Olive and Scarlet, so we need to go there. Okay, so it's right over here. Excuse me, young man. Where do you think you're going? Greetings, ma'am. I'm looking for the... I don't care who you're looking for. You shall not pass. No visitors allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at... Deary, tell me because old age has made me blind. Did someone write information bureau on my forehead? Because I'm not here to answer your questions. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave, or I shall report you to the police.
So I need to dress up differently. Let's go to a kiosk and maybe we can buy some clothes. I wonder if I have anything that would already fit the description. Let's try. So artistic would be... Let's try hats. Yeah, I'm gonna go to a kiosk or to a clothing store and buy something. Don't miss out on my you. Let's pick something that suits you. So we gotta try to make ourselves look like Mercurio. Let's see, let's see how he looks. Alright, something like that. Like an artist, I guess. Let's see if this guy has something. Leave. Take one more look. Let's pick something that suits you. Oh, there we go. Let's check the hair. There we go. A good choice. That should A be good enough, choice right? Indeed. Don't miss out on my unique clothes. Let's go back to his house. Boniface, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago, and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. Flat number two. Are they numbered? I don't see the numbers. Oh, there's one? Okay, I see. There's two. 